Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Um, I want to talk a little bit about it in our, the, uh, my videography and the lighting and the camera boom that I use to show you kind of a behind the scenes of when I make these uh, wood turning uh, videos. Before I bought a camcorder, I uh, mentioned in an earlier video, I started off with a uh, point and shoot camera that had a video mode. And the challenge was getting the appropriate view when I needed an up high view. Um, and I was talking to a friend of mine that uh, shot video for, for one of the clubs I was in and we were discussing the challenge and I was describing the view problem. The biggest issue I had was a viewfinder and I said, gosh, if I mounted up, up high, I'd need a stepladder to uh, be able to see through it. And then it dawned on me, well, okay, there's a solution, a stepladder. And you can see from this picture, this was my first solution was the, was the stepladder. Uh, you can see where the camera was mounted on a piece of wood, and then I had a piece of wood with a pipe on the end of it to project it over the uh, lathe bed. But it was it was awkward to set up. It was uh, it, it got in the way of moving around my shop, and it was hard to take down. So I needed a, a better solution, and let me show you what that solution was. So I was watching uh, one of Carl Jacobson's uh, videos. He showed his articulating camera boom. So I thought, oh, that's a perfect solution. So here's the Here's the one I made. Uh, actually, this was a model of the one I'm going to show you. So I made this model to try to figure out the moving parts to see what it is I wanted to do. And I came up with this, this method of mounting it on the ceiling, actually using this, uh, a dowel uh, swivel. Uh, and, and this model was helpful in getting me to understand uh, what I needed to do. So let me show you what I came up with. So here's the boom I came up with, with an articulating arm, and it rotates with this knob. This knob I can raise this up and down. I have a little sandpaper here to keep it from slipping. Uh, with this knob, I can rotate this a little bit if I need it. With a knob in the back here, I can move this around. Uh, I decided to put a power supply up here uh, for two reasons. Number one, to power the camera occasionally so I wouldn't have to rely on the battery of uh, the camera and have it run out in the middle of a shoot. And also to power a viewfinder, which I'm, a remote viewfinder, which I'll show you shortly. And I've got a switch here where I can turn this power on and off so I don't have to unplug this. I can just flip the switch. And here's how I make it uh, swivel. I actually just took a dowel, uh, put a plate up there with a uh, with the dowel, so the dowel moves. I put a little uh, canuba wax and waxed it a little bit, and, and it has a pin so it won't uh, come out. Uh, and and that works real well. The more sophisticated ones, I think uh, Carl or, or Chips Menendez used a uh, used a roller uh, wheel platform or something. But this was cheap; didn't cost me anything, and it seems to 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 work well. Let me show you some still pictures of the parts. Uh, the long rods are 28 inches long. Uh, the short arm is 26 inches uh, long. And I made these out of uh, uh, plywood uh, and, and purchased some quarter inch by 20 uh, knobs. One of the challenges I have from time to time is that uh, articulating arm might shift on me a little bit or I don't get the view. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't get the view exactly right, and I uh, stumbled upon this idea of coming up with a remote viewfinder with a rear uh, rear camera uh, for a vehicle uh, kit. I ordered this from Amazon for, oh, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks, had it shipped from China. The instructions are in Chinese and not in English. Um, but this is what I come up with. I came up with this uh, seven inch color monitor that I can reposition. I mounted it on a uh, magnetic uh, base and, and it's powered by a, a 12 volt it's powered by this 12 volt uh, transformer uh, to match the automobile uh, power and I just happen to have an old multi-purpose transformer in my uh, old electrical uh, stuff so it I was able to adapt that fairly fairly easily so now I can reposition now I can reposition this viewfinder 
and verify when I'm standing at the lathe uh, the image that I want to want to get. And I can I can put it on the uh, uh, headstock if I like, or I can put it on the the, the tailstock, or I could even move it over and put it on my uh, my bandsaw when I'm when I'm doing something uh, over here on my workbench, i.e. table saw. I bought some inexpensive uh, uh, photo uh, portable photo lights. Uh, this is an example of one of them, and uh, I retrofitted it the daylight fluorescent bulb with a hundred watt LED, which seems to work fairly well, although. It, I'd like to have more light. Over, overhead for my task lighting, that, which I've been using before, I had a, a floodlight, outdoor floodlight in here, and I've replaced that with a 100 watt uh, daylight, uh, 500 or 5,000 Kelvin uh, day, uh, daylight LED bulb, which, uh, which works, works very, very well. And in addition, the task lighting on my lathe the Moffett light. I replaced that uh, tungsten incandescent light with a, a hundred watt LED. So I get I get some pretty good pretty good light. So I hope this back uh, behind the scenes look was helpful for you to understand the some of the what goes involved in making some of these videos as I've continued to work on on trying to improve it. Talk to you later.